Help us get into that, of course, the great Susan Waldman, who's been joining us last uh, couple of weeks here on the show. And our conversation with Susan brought to you by Empower Solar. Susan, BT and Sal, how you doing today? I'm great, thank you. You know, I was listening to Howie, and I had no idea the Mets and Phillies had never played in postseason. We have to make that happen. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, be, my, my partner would be an absolute deranged lunatic. Everybody, that would be crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be I awesome. Know, well, oh, boy. Yeah. I can't wait to see that, as long as I can watch it from afar. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, well, you know, the thing is, while the Yankees get to chill a little bit here, Susan, the pressure is coming very soon uh, for the superstar player who's got to prove. He's got to have a Reggie moment at some point for the manager who's got to win. Can you speak to the pressure that the Yankees face going into this postseason? You know, you know what? You know what? If you talk to these guys, and I, I assume you're talking about Aaron Judge and Aaron yes, Boone, yes. to Aaron's there. Yes. Um, I have never. I've, they put so much pressure on themselves. They know it's a say. Aaron Aaron Judge handles this about as well. I can't think of anybody that handles pressure the way Aaron Judge does because um, he's by himself, and I, obviously Jeter did, and all those people. But at, but. At, Aaron Judge is actually kind of a different cat, and I don't think that they feel external pressure. I think that they've been trying very hard to, to block it all out and just do what they're supposed to do. As far as the manager is concerned, I, I have something that I have said um, for a while now, I, and I, I understand the pressure that Boone is, is under, and whether he feels it or not, we're never really going to know because he always tries to stay the same. But think of this team. Think about this team. And he knows all the things that have been said about him also. They've got no production pretty much out of left field. They've got no production till Jazz walked in the door at third base. They've got no production all year really out of first base with a few games. And really, except for Austin Wells' offensive um, things a while ago, no production out of um, catcher offensively. And the bullpen has blown up. It's back together now. How bad could the manager actually be? Mm hmm. It's a very good point, but the standard for the Yankees is different. You got to win a championship, Susan, at some point. You have to. Well, uh, well, but you have to at some point. They haven't won in 15 years. So, I mean, it's, it, I mean it would be really this year. I think here's my feeling about this year. Um, everybody has major flaws. So I think anyone could win this. Yep. I think the Yankees could go all the way. I also think the Yankees could be knocked out by whoever, Seth Lugo and Cole Reagan. I mean, it's, it's easy to see either side. And, it's, and I think it's because of the way the baseball season is. But there's no great team out there. And, and you know, there's, there's talent on the Yankee team. Is this a great team? I'm not so sure. You know, it's carried by pretty much two people. Is there anybody, Susan, that you think is a better matchup for the Yanks? Like, would you rather face – I know you probably don't care, but would they rather face Baltimore or Kansas City? No, no, and if they do, they're keeping it to themselves. As Aaron Boone said to me, I've asked him every day. <laughs> he gives me the same answer. He says, be careful what you wish for. How do they stay sharp here? I mean, listen, I, I could answer the question. That, listen, but, if, they knew, if they knew, they would they would do it. I know they're going to do sim games. Yeah. I know they're going to face live batters. Um, they can bring up guys, I guess, from the minor leagues or complex. There's the stay ready group that's down in Tampa. Mm -hmm. I don't know because teams last year didn't do it. Look at the teams that were knocked out, and it's all in that was it, Dove. Philly, Atlanta, and, and the Dodgers? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, so it's they were all out. I don't know what they do. Yeah. I don't know what they do. Does Garrett Cole, he, he pitched a, a, to hitters yesterday. Um, do they have two bullpens? Carlos Rodon, I've asked him. He's pitching game two. He said, I think I did this once before. I had two pull, full bullpens. But if they knew what to do, they would all do it, and no one would be rusty. And we'll see what happens on Saturday. What do you think the Yanks have learned about Carlos Rodon in year two? I don't think it's what the Yankees have learned so much as what Carlos Rodon did to um, change himself and to be the pitcher that he thought he was always going to be. It took a while. He walked in here. The injuries obviously set him back, but he is a real self-starter. And over the year, and I, I think, quite frankly, it took him a while um, to stop being stubborn and to learn to get 
used to those other pitches because they'd been telling him, nobody can get through your entire career with a fastball on the slider. Yours is really good. But he, in his mind, I think, thought, I've done this. I got this big contract doing nothing but throwing fastballs and sliders. When they added the cutter, when they added the curve, they added the change to him. I think he resisted it because when you, because I think he was getting beaten on those things. But um, over the winter, he was a real self-starter. He was not going to walk in here and get booed and be embarrassed again. And the biggest thing about Carlos Rodon this year is that he stayed healthy. And over his career, that has been um, the problem with him. BT and Sal, we're talking with Susan Waldman. Susan, what's your biggest concern with this team going into the postseason? That they're not going to hit. Oof. No, at actually, all? I, love, I love that answer. Not, I didn't say not answer. at all. <laughs> I didn't say not at all. When this team has lost, why has it lost? Yep. Because there's bats. not enough offense, and, but but we're seeing a lot of other things. We've seen over you know the past uh, the last week or so, we've seen more moving the runner. We've seen more bunting, and if you look at the teams that are playing now, they're all doing that. Yeah. I mean, it, it it can be done. Uh, the days of sitting around and waiting for Judge and Soto, you can't do that in the playoffs, and they know it. And I think that's the that's been the problem with the Yankees when they've gotten beaten. Mm-hmm. Is it hasn't been it hasn't been the pitching. Why have they been kicked out of the not out of the playoffs in a while because nobody hit. It was the offense that was the problem, not the pitching. You're 100% right, and and that's why I thought some of those games, uh, aside from the fact that they were actually wins and they mattered as they tried to secure the uh, the best record in the American League, but some mm-hmm. of those games, some of those games against the Royals, I thought I thought that was really important because it is possibly a foreshadow into October baseball. But I think that's a that's a deeper question, or at least a deeper issue for me. Your answer is you don't know if they're going to hit, and you're right. How do you not hit with a 300 something million dollar payroll? How do we, how well, I we... don't know that that has anything to do with anything. You well, could pl- pay me three hundred dollars, three hundred million dollars. I wouldn't hit. Yeah, I don't but... think the money has anything to do with it. I really don't. And I know that that's well. If you've got a, but how much of that salary is on just a few players? Yeah, that's the, that's the problem. You look at the other people. So Glaber is in one of his. I'm going to hit. Moss. I don't worry about him. Mm-hmm. And you don't know what's going to happen at first base. Uh, you do know that Jazz Chisholm is is going to hit. You know that he's going to do a lot of other things also uh, to try and get on base. I I like their chances, but we've also seen them get in this. Well, Soto and Judge are going to do it, and that quite frankly is not enough in the playoffs. It usually is not, particularly with these kinds of uh, pitchers. We saw this when they just lost games to Baltimore. That's exactly what you saw. Did Dominguez take himself off the field with that defense last week or so? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think it's going to, a lot of this is going to, I read things that's going to be um, Cole, Rodon, and Heal. I'm not so sure. Oh, I, he, I think well, Heal to the bullpen? Spot. Well, I don't know that you do that. I don't know that you do that either. There's three games. Yeah, I think it's going to depend. They really love what Clark Schmidt has done. I think it's going to depend on game one. If Garrett Cole falls down the stairs in the first inning in the, in the dugout and has to be replaced by somebody, it'll be one of those two. So then what do you do for game three? Then the other one um, pitches. But that's, I, I, they're really, I think they're split on this, and they're going to wait to see who they're going to play. I mm. think it's going to be a little bit different depending on whether it's Kansas City or Baltimore. Both teams, by the way, uh, very athletic, run, do a lot of things. We watch Kansas City, um, it, what, what they can do with, you know, with, with a couple of players. You know, they're complementary players, and there's Witt, Bobby Witt and Salvi Perez. But you watch how they take the extra base, and you watch how athletic they are, and I think you're going to have to have some of that. Maybe there's not a favorable or, or more favorable matchup one way or another for this round, Susan, but you've covered this team. Obviously, you've been with them all year long. Who's the biggest threat of the rest of the teams in the American League? Oh, yeah. <laughs> until they put a dagger in the heart of the Houston Astros, I, I need them to beat them. I mean, that's the, that's, and I know it's not the same team. I absolutely understand it, but I think that uh, that I would love to see. I want them to, you know, to, they're going to have to come here. The Astros this time, I don't know that they can get out of their rounds with their pitching either, but um, I would just love to see that. That's my heart talking in my head. Um, I don't think it matters to them actually. I don't, I don't think that they think that in the American League there's someone that's, um, you know, that's harder than, than the others. Some might say Cleveland, um, but I think it's been a long time since they've seen them. But my heart wants them to go and beat up on the Astros. I'm sorry, I just do. I do, too. Uh, you're not alone. <laughs> Absolutely. Susan Waldman with us here. BT and Sound on the fan. He's young. 
He's got tools. He's flashed those tools. But how important is it, do you think, I don't want to say organizationally, because they're not going to move off of him, obviously, but just the perception of Volpe, that, he's, that, he, that he shows something here in October. Well, I think that everybody wants to show something in October. I mean, what do you, what, he's going to be—he's their shortstop, and he's going to be their shortstop. He also, the last few games, has started. You know, he's, he's, his highs and lows this year have been really high and really low. And I think that you know that he just keeps his head down and he keeps going. And of course, it's important. That it's important for everybody um, to contribute. But I think people think that there's got to be repercussions if Anthony Volpe goes one for twenty. What do you think is going to happen? It's not going to happen. It would be really nice if he if he didn't go one for twenty. Mm-hmm. But he, as as long as he's playing great shortstop and. I don't know what they think. It's not like there's repercussions happening. Does the manager get fired if they if they get knocked out in the first round? Somebody's got to do something. I don't know. What have you been doing? I don't know, but I. Sorry. But all you, no, it's just it's like I, I all these questions. Everybody answers, ask them, and I ask them too. It's not like I mean, what are you going to do if he's one for twenty? He's your shortstop. What have you been doing you with all this time off, Susan? There? Well, you, you have all what this. Are, you have all this time off here. Yankees are resting. <laughs> what have you been doing with your time off? Well, I don't rest. <laughs> so, oh, what are we looking at? Dinners, I... play? Where, 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 what the do we garden, got? You yeah. know, the garden, right? No, no, no. No? Oh, no, 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 oh. no. I've got stuff in the corner that I've had to do. I had to go to the vet this morning. I had to take the dog to the vet. There's a lot of things it to do. It takes two hours. That's you that. had a week off. <laughs> How long does it take? I haven't had a week off. No? Have I had a week off? No. Monday, Tuesday, it's three days. That's true. That is true. Yeah. How excited are you? Just, uh, I, I, we believe this is the final run with John here. I mean, it's Susan mm-hmm. and John. Yeah. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, it, it's great. It's I got people, um, I get texts from people that said it's just, it sounds right, doesn't it? You know, it's it's October, it's playoffs, and, you know, if this is the final, and, and he says it is. And I just think it's because he, you know, all of a sudden he was gone, and you don't get to go out the way you want to. And and um, it's it's been fun. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's actually great, and it's really easy for me. And it's, um, we know what we're thinking, and we finish each other's sentences, and that's what happens when you work together for 20 years. You've been getting hit up for tickets, Susan? I don't know. Those these are different. No, no, no. I don't do tickets. They, oh. You have to buy these. Oh, that's this what I'm is, saying. Though, but aren't people like, "Hey, Susan, you know, Yankee postseason. It's going to be the hottest ticket in town, and we're giving a bunch right, away." Right. I the got fan. twenty in my desk. Right. No, 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 no. I don't. <laughs> no, I, no. What you have to do is that I would have to buy them, and then I did this for a few years. I have to buy them, and then I have to be like a ticket broker and and dole them out, and then Ugh. people complain they're in the wrong place. And how did you, how how come I have to sit here? And how come I'm not sitting here? So I don't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Don't See, waste that's time. why I asked because we get that to a much lesser level. I remember working with Mike. Oh my God, it used to drive him nuts. The amount it used to drive me nuts, but it was the like the amount of people that would hit him up. So I'm assuming you, Susan, the voice of the Yankees, everybody that you know. Hey, Susan, how about tickets? How about tickets? And meanwhile, you're like, no, but no, but what it is is that people that you haven't heard from in years call and i'm so excited because someone finally called me and then you know ask after how are you and i should have been calling you and i'm really sorry by the way as soon as you hear the by the way i know what's coming (laughs) and usually it's uh, by the way and i'll pay for them but can you get me five tickets? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, I have a. Now you got to cut desk. Susan. <laughs> you, Susan, you got to cut those people off. Those people are no, they, they're, they're not real well, people. I cut them off. But yeah. my problem is that I never changed my cell phone over years. So oh, so it's yeah. just that. And and there was one day I just looked at my phone and and I said to nobody in particular, doesn't anybody really like me? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, we like you, Susan. That's why you're on with us. Oh, but you you didn't ask me for tickets. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a follow up. By the way, we're struggling. Can we get? I don't, I don't have any. And by the way, postseason, there's no freebies. There's no comps. The Steinbrenners don't even get comps. No, wow. this is, this is, okay. yeah, this is other, other it's, stuff here. So, no, I time. have no tickets. And even if you, <laughs> even if you want to pay for them, my answer would be, of course you would pay for them, but I don't have it. I got you. Uh, well, great. listen, <laughs> hey, here's to a long, lengthy run through October. Great spot. And uh, can't wait to hear you guys on Saturday. Thank you. Okay, thank you, guys. Have a great day. You too. That is Susan Waldman, uh, brought to you by Empower Solar. Uh, supercharge your savings and electrify your life. It is the biggest misnomer, I think, in the sports business. Yeah. Like, everybody just thinks, oh, you work at SNY, or oh, you work for the fan. You get tickets? Like, sometimes, sure, but huh? no. Like, oh, Susan, you're the voice of the Yankees. You got free tickets? No, leave me alone. Like, 
We Although don't. I, you know, we did throw a line in the water early, and did looks you get like those Yankee tickets might be coming through on, on this end. Uh-huh. 